In this video, I'm going to share three easy steps for cinematic lighting in any scene. Call it a recipe or a formula, but if you constantly find yourself not knowing where to start or just generally feeling unhappy with your lighting setups, this is it. Whether you're shooting outdoors in natural light, using one light, or setting up a bunch of lights, regardless of your budget, these steps will instantly raise the production value of your films. Step number one, keep it natural. With lighting, the goal is always to make the scene look and feel like no lights were used. The only way to do this is to use lights from angles that make sense to the viewer. In other words, using the light sources that already exist in the scene and motivating them towards a more flattering image. Before you start setting up lights, ask yourself where is the light already coming from naturally? Is it coming from a window, a door, a lamp perhaps? Once you've identified your light sources, it's time for step two, upstage lighting. This is by far the most popular technique used in cinema and commercials, also referred to as shooting backlit. Find the brightest light source in your scene and put your subject in front of it. The light source doesn't have to be directly behind your subject, but the more important matter is your camera placement, and the goal here is to shoot from the shadow side. Let's look at a few examples. In this scene, the brightest source is the window, and the camera is placed on the shadow side of the face, shooting towards the light. In this case, we have 100% natural light coming through the window at the right angle, but most of the time, you'll have to motivate the natural light from outside first, with a brighter LED, shining through the window, giving you more control and consistency. Next, we have this lamp, the only visible light in the scene coming from behind with the camera shooting from the shadow side. Even if the camera is moving, I'm starting from the shadow side for the majority of the shot and we have the bright source coming from the curtains. The same goes for shooting outside in natural light. When comparing these two frames, the one on the left feels flat and boring and the one on the right has a lot more depth. That's because of this gradient going from bright to dark into the shadows with the rim light creating separation from the background. In frame A, shooting with the sun directly from behind is filling in all the shadows and even with shallow depth for field, it still feels flat. Turn it around, shooting into the direction of the sun and immediately things change. The brightest source doesn't have to be exactly behind your subject, you just want enough shadows to make the image pop. This approach is so powerful that I plan most of my outdoor shoots around when the sun will be behind my subject, usually the first or last two hours of the day. Shooting into a brighter source also illuminates certain elements better, like dust, steam, smoke, and light rays. Before I carry on, I want to take a moment and tell you about a free learning platform for photographers and filmmakers. Yes, you heard right, it's free. The Alpha Universe is flooded with educational content from a variety of talented creators from all genres, and I often share tutorials exclusive to the platform. Check out my link in the description below for more info. Now to motivate different light sources, starting outdoors in natural light. The first thing I did was to diffuse the backlight hitting Kristen. A simple 5-in-1 reflector does the trick here, but on bigger sets, I like to use a scrim gym, usually an 8x8. To motivate the sunlight, I'm using another 5-in-1 reflector on the white side to bounce full into the face. But the most important part is the angle where it's coming from, and this is the crux of upstage lighting. A common mistake would be to take the reflector and put it on the opposite side of where the sun is coming from to fill in the shadows, but now it just looks unnatural. What you want to do is angle it from the same side as the sun and only fill in the side of the face where the sun is coming from, creating a gradual roll off into the shadows. In the first test, we were also getting a natural fill bouncing from the table, so I added the black cloth from the 5-in-1 reflector as a negative fill to protect the shadows. Removing fill is just as important as adding full, so if you're not getting that gradual roll off from bright to dark, it helps to try and remove some light on the shadow side, like we did in this example in the kitchen. Going indoors. To motivate the lamp, I put the full lights on the same side as the lamp, but at an angle to wrap around gradually into the face. Here I just used two nanolite power tubes, an easy affordable setup. I put the grid attachments on to keep the light from spilling all over the room and to keep the ambience of the lamp intact. Looking at it without grids, you can see why it's important to control the light to keep the scene natural. The first tube is set at a brighter intensity, with the second tube a bit lower 
to help with a gradual fill. When lighting a scene, it's super important to always start with your wides because your first objective is to light the overall space and not the face. As I move in for a close up, I now have the opportunity to soften the light on the face by using a diffuser because it's not visible in the frame. Moving on to step three, adding more depth. There are multiple ways you can spice up a scene, but first let's start with color contrast. This is achieved by using different temperature lights. For example, here we have the warm light coming from the lamp with a cooler light emulating moonlight coming from the back. In this case, I just used two power tubes, one for the back and one for the window. And then here we're using the lamp, a practical that already exists in the scene to create a nice warm room light. It doesn't always have to hit your subject directly, like in this example, where we have a warm tungsten feel with a cooler white light in the background. You can add texture to your scene by lighting up certain areas with practicals, like this lamp creating two different colors, or by using a focus light where it looks like the sun's coming through a hole in the roof, or in this example where the projector attachment is creating a streak of hard light. The checkerboard is a great way to achieve even more depth and involves contrast between the brightness in your scenes, most prominently seen in this example, where you have bright, dark, bright, dark. I use this method mostly for indoor scenes with dim lighting setups to create more mood. For example, in this shot, the lighting enhances the tension in the room. Next, you've got reflections. Shooting into surfaces that reflect light automatically creates more depth, and I'm always searching for a frame where I can utilize this. And then one of the best ways to create more separation between your subject and the background is to use a hazer. I use this on most of my film sets, and even if you don't own one, it's usually pretty cheap to rent. Looking at the before and after, you can see how the haze softens the background, automatically drawing your eyes more to the subject. Shooting silhouettes is also a powerful way to separate your subject and if used in the right context, you don't need detail in your subject since the movement tells the story. Once you see these elements in cinema, you won't be able to unsee it. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.